Hey, yo, ladies, gentlemen, fellas, 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 week five NFL betting picks preview going on right now. I got four more spread picks for you that I already bet. The first over under of the year that I've bet, and I got another teaser for you. We are now 2-0 and on our little teasers this week, and we were 2-2 two and two on last week's six picks until we went into that last game of the entire week, the Packers. The Packers hit the teaser for us, and then they hit the outright bet of minus seven, minus seven and a half, depending on where you got it for us. So we went 4-2 and two last week, our best week of the year thus far. We are now 2-0 and on our teasers, and I have another nice little teaser for you today that goes through all the magic numbers that we talked about the minus seven the minus six the minus four and the minus three so it looks like those teasers potentially are going to be in a really nice spot again to hit so fingers crossed on that for the nfl week five we're going to get into total those six bets in just a moment but before we do if you're brand new here please do hit the like button hit the big old subscribe button there may be a chance that i double upload this video onto another channel that i just created be called big energy sports so be sure to subscribe to that one if you're coming over from my personal brand so just check that out i'm gonna throw up some other random stuff on that channel we'll see what happens maybe in the sports betting space primarily and some other areas. Either way though, smash the subscribe button on wherever you're watching this bad boy. Hit the like button for me one time. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate all that stuff. And this video is sponsored by, as you can see above my head, Monkey Knife Fight on the YouTube video, at least if you listen on the podcast, how those ears doing, sponsored by Monkey Knife Fight. If you like prop betting, we're going to have a prop betting video out on Friday. Maybe it's Saturday and you're watching this. Maybe it is Friday and it's your lucky day. But on Friday, we're gonna have a prop betting video out coming out around noon. That prop video is going to be looking at some of the Monkey Knife Fight lines and giving you some advice based on where our analysis, based on where my models are and the research of the person doing the video will be so check that video out if you need a little bit of help or you could also just make the bet yourself if you really want to but monkey knife fight promo code vetri v-e-t-r-i get you a 100 deposit match up to 50 dollar ruskies you want to just put 10 dollars in you will get 10 free yes free dollars you want to put 50 bucks in you will get 50 free dollars that's how it works so free money everywhere then the video on friday will help you kind of understand what you're betting on if you don't have a full grasp of player props i think most people do over under yards over under touchdowns that type of thing check it out link down below monkey knife fight they're absolutely dominating it right now and they are the proud sponsor of the week five nfl betting video fellas 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 let's get into this bad boy i got my bets up over here on the right side or a little bit of analysis for you the sheet behind me if you're watching on youtube it's just kind of a sheet that's we don't have all the lines right now it's just a sheet that i use as a quick reference point uh you can get that also linked down below on patreon as along with a lot of other stuff 20 plus pages of game by game notes my projections rankings all that stuff but let's go over to vegas insider right now and the team that i'm going to be betting on is above me right now the washington redskins versus the los angeles rams the redskins come in they open at plus nine and a half it may quickly 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 got bet down to minus seven and a half. If you don't know what that means, if you don't know what line movement means, I made a video just last week on describing all the betting tips and kind of stuff for beginners, intermediate, and even advanced. So you can check out why that line movement happens. But the reason that the Rams go from nine and a half point favorites to seven and a half point favorites is the market was jumping on Washington. So the line pushes towards the Rams to make it less appealing to continue to bet Washington. But we got Washington luckily at plus nine and a half. There's still some plus eight, plus eight and a half numbers out there that might be a little bit of juice on the minus eight and a half or plus eight and a half. But now it's down to minus seven and a half. And there's a lot of things to like about Washington, the way that they're trending right now. There's also a lot of things to like about the Rams, but that's exactly why they're touchdown favorites in this game. So as I look at it right now, I do have the Washington side of this one. We bet them week one in a very similar spot. They were touchdown underdogs, about eight point underdogs in a lot of spots against the Eagles, who we did not know who the Eagles were at that time as they are right now, just a one and three team, barely one and three, thanks to Nick Mullins on Sunday Night Football last week. But right now, Washington is trending in the right direction. Now, overall in the year, they're the 28th ranked offense, not great, but the Rams are only the 19th overall defense. They're not as good as they once were, and their run defense is absolutely abysmal. The Rams right now ranked 30th in run defense when Washington's offensive line and running game ranks 15th overall. Not bad. And the nice thing for Washington in the running game is that Antonio Gibson, their rookie running back who did not have a huge sample size in college, looks very good. Now he's only had two weeks with a full workload of like 65 to 70 percent of the snaps this year. And in both of those weeks, he's looked very good. He just comes off of a 128 total yard game with a touchdown. Could have had two touchdowns, but got stopped at the goal line trying to jump over the line. And he is trending in the right direction. Anytime I, I have said it so far a couple times this year, even when Terry McLaurin's on the field, he looks like the best athlete overall on either side of the ball when Antonio Gibson is given the ball he looks like the best playmaker so he looks very good it's nice to see him trending in the right direction right now Washington's secondary ranks fifth this is a secondary that was abysmal last year Landon Collins playing good now that he's healthy Mareu is taking a huge step forward and becoming a number one cornerback for this team right now by far but Jared Goff ranks fifth in yards per attempt at 8.7 that's one of the things that Washington's defense does very well limiting efficient passing which is basically how the Rams have been good this year they're not doing it based on volume when they were throwing 40 plus times a game last year Jared Goff and his receivers aren't having huge blow-up games right they're having like 40 50 yard games if they get a touchdown they're helping you out in fantasy because Jared Goff the running game one has been working but he's been ultra efficient on play action passing right now on play action passing and passing in general just 6.6 yards per attempt is what this Washington defense is allowing another nice thing is the Rams are currently a bottom 10 team in pace which means if they're going to slow the game down they're going to take more time to snap the ball that can only help Washington because you want this game to be over as quick as possible if you're somebody who wants Washington to cover within seven eight or nine points depending on where you got it so the slower the pace the game overall plays the more advantage for the underdog especially if it's a big underdog and then Dwayne 
Haskins. Not only is Antonio Gibson in the running game trending in the right direction against a tough matchup in the Ravens, mind you, but also Dwayne Haskins against a tough matchup in the Ravens had himself a nice game last week. In week four, he goes for over 300 yards, a 71% completion percentage and seven yards per attempt. The yards per attempt is an average number right there, but all the other stuff looks really good. So they're trending in the right direction. Their defense continues to play very well from a pass rush, a run stop. Overall, their defense right now is in the top half of the league. And again, their coverage looks very nice right now. If they can disrupt the running game of the Rams, stop the efficient passing to an extent from Jerry Goff, which it seems like their defense is built to do through four weeks. I like them to cover this touchdown spread. And that's where we have them at right now. We got them at plus nine and a half. Right now, they're bet down to plus seven and a half. I would still take that number if you get the hook on it at plus seven and a half. That's our first bet of the week, the Washington football team. So the second bet, Arizona versus the New York Jets right now. Arizona opened as eight and a half point favorites. They've been bet down, or at least the Jets have been bet on to make this line now just minus seven, which is interesting because 85% of the money right now is on Arizona, but the line is moving towards the Jets, which tells you that some very sharp people have so far put their money on the New York Jets. And I'm going to be honest, this one's a difficult spot to get to right now, right? Like we like the Arizona side of it because they just look like the better team overall. Sam Donald's probably not starting, which a lot of people are going to say, yeah, is that really a downgrade going to Joe Flacco? I think just mobility wise, like being able to move the pocket, being able to have those long touchdown runs, which obviously aren't always going to happen, but just having that upside to actually use your mobility where Joe Flacco very understandably is probably going to be a statue in the pocket. I think that it is going to be a downgrade for them, but this Arizona team in general right now, if you look at it, look, Murray has looked very bad so far, a 4.3 yards per attempt last week, 6.4 on the year is 32nd in the NFL currently, but now he gets a nice get right spot against the New York Jets defense that ranks 28th in coverage, allowing 7.4 yards per attempt right now. They rank 24th in total defense. The one nice thing for the Jets is they do get pressure. They rank 10th overall in pressure rating right now. And Arizona's offense right now ranks 27th overall. Kenny Drake is hurting the running game. Kyler Murray has not been that great outside of his rushing ability. He has been very bad in the passing game, believe it or not. Arizona ranks 25th in total defense. The upside for Arizona in this game is that the Jets rank 30th in total offense right now. They're abysmal, but really a lot of it has to just do with injuries, not only to their wide receivers, which is well known at this point. Now their quarterback, their offensive line has been banged up. Becton, their all-star rookie, it seems like already, second highest graded rookie coming into week four. He's banged up now. So with Darnold likely out, I do think that Joe Flacco is a little bit of a drop down. You have less mobility there and now you have less weapons at all. So your offense is a little bit more stagnant in my opinion. You have a Jets offensive line that ranks 32nd according to Pro Football Focus. How is how do you feel comfortable if you're Joe Flacco coming off of that injury, going behind the worst offensive line in the league according to Pro Football Focus? So as of right now, it seems like the obvious public bet to me is Arizona. 68% of the spread on that, 85% of the money, but the line has moved towards the New York Jets. Which right now, the one thing that that tells me is two things. One, this line was created before they kind of took into account Sam Darnold being out. I don't know if they actually value Darnold by a point and a half over Flacco. And I believe that this line was already out. So I don't think it's that. Or number two, there's been some very big named and confident and professional sports bettors going in there and laying their money on the Jets this week because 15% of the money being on the Jets, but the line moving in that direction tells you that, okay, maybe they're pushing it this way because of that situation. So basically what this comes down to, if you're betting this is, do you want to be on the side where the overwhelming amount of the public is on the Arizona Cardinals? Or do you want to potentially be on the side? This is not hundred percent true where there's some very confident sports bettors backing the New York Jets in this one. Arizona is coming off a loss where they looked very bad against the Carolina Panthers. Now I think the Carolina Panthers are a little bit better than we give them credit for. Their offense is definitely better than this Jets offense. This is a difficult spot to take a stance on this week because minus eight and a half for Arizona is a lot. Minus seven is a little bit better. It's a lot better in my opinion for a point and a half. My first inclination was to take Arizona at minus seven, but right now I have the New York Jets at plus seven and a half. And that feels absolutely disgusting to say. The only reason I'm taking the Jets at plus seven and a half is because every single piece of public money right now is on the Arizona Cardinals. And more times than not, these types of bets where it's 85% of the current money, 68% of the spread tickets on the Cardinals, more times than not, that's when the casino in Vegas usually makes their most money. So I'm going to take the opposite side of this one. Our second bet of the week is New York Jets plus seven and a half versus the Arizona Cardinals. If you're anybody that just uses just players and overall personnel to try and make your bets, this would be an absolute obvious bet of Arizona this week. But betting on the numbers and betting on the spread percentages is going to lead me to the New York Jets. It feels gross. Hold your nose and get on to the next one. And that next one's going to be a pretty decent one. As you look right here, the Battle of Pennsylvania in this one, you have the Pittsburgh Steelers minus seven right now versus the Philadelphia Eagles and over under a 45. I've got positions in both the over under in this game and also Pittsburgh with the seven point spread. So I'm taking Pittsburgh right now at a seven point spread. A lot of the money and all the spread picks right now, even the publics and the sharps, everybody is basically on Pittsburgh. The spread has not moved since it's open. So there's been no influence either way. Every single person is on Pittsburgh. So you might be saying, Sal, you just told me that you don't want to be on the side with all the public and everything. Well, I think the sharps are also on the side of Pittsburgh in this one. So the public and sharps usually don't like to line up, but when they do, I feel comfortable going that way. And then also the other big thing is that you can take some sides where the public's on. The public doesn't always lose. You just don't want to be majority on the side of where all the spread and money picks are in most of your bets. So you have Philadelphia versus Pittsburgh in this one. Look, I just think Pittsburgh is by far the better team. And I think that's what the public obviously thinks as well, because Philadelphia has just looked absolutely terrible. Even coming off a win, I don't think anybody's really going to feel too good about Philadelphia because they looked terrible in that game. Zach Ertz couldn't even hit 10 receiving yards. Carson Wentz still looked bad in my opinion. They weren't involving Miles Sanders and they were facing Nick Mullins and barely got out with a 
win. Pittsburgh ranks number two in overall defense for you and Philadelphia ranks 32nd, second worst. So the second worst offense currently through four weeks against the second best overall defense. Pittsburgh ranks number two in pressure rating, number three in run stop. Philadelphia ranks number 12 in pass blocking advantage. So that's good. But Philadelphia also ranks number one in pressure rate. So they might be able to get to Big Ben, except for the fact that his offensive line is currently top five in the NFL right now and not allowing a lot of dropbacks and not allowing a lot of pressure rating on Big Ben right now. The Steelers allow just 6.6 yards per attempt and currently Carson Wentz ranks 39th, dead last in the NFL. If you don't count like one pass attempt from Andy Dalton and like one pass attempt from Jacoby Brissett or a couple, 39th in the NFL is last amongst all the starting quarterbacks. It's worse than Mitch Trubisky, worse than Nick Foles, worse than Daniel Jones, worse than Dwayne Haskins is with his yards per attempt is right now just 5.8. And one of Pittsburgh's strengths outside of their run stop, their pass rush, all this stuff is not allowing efficient passing, just 6.6 yards per attempt. Pittsburgh's also coming off the bye, which is important to note. It's kind of a weird bye though, because they didn't figure out that they were on the bye week until Friday, which kind of sucks for them in general. But they do have another week to get healthy. Deontay Johnson has another week to probably get healthy and get through the concussion protocol and all that stuff. So it makes me like them even more. So you have two solid defenses, two solid pass rushes in this one. I'm actually going to be taking the under in this one. It's currently getting bet up to the over, which is a perfect situation for me to want to take the under. It got bet up to 45. It opened at 44 in a lot of spots. It's now up to 45, 44 and a half in a lot of spots. I have the under 45 in this one. It's not a good idea to be taking unders in today's NFL a whole lot of the time, especially under 45 points when you're seeing game totals consistently hit like 55 or more. But in this one, we're going to hold our nose. Our first over under bet on this show on the entire season is going to be the under in this Philadelphia matchup. And we have the Pittsburgh side of it, Pittsburgh minus seven and the under 45 in this one. So right now we have currently given you our three spread picks that I currently have. It's going to be the New York Jets plus seven and a half. That feels gross, but I think it's the sharp side of it. Washington plus nine and a half. So we're going with some of the underdogs. Then we take the favorite in Pittsburgh minus seven and the under 45 in Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia. Let's get into our final spread pick of the day. And then we're going to be getting into our teasers. And it's weird this week because I have a bunch of big underdogs, which usually is not my forte, especially if you have bad quarterbacks, which right now it seems like outside of that Philadelphia game, I'm kind of taking the chances on some bad quarterbacks. We don't know what Joe Flacco is, but we're going to assume as a backup that he's not great. We know that Dwayne Haskins is coming off of maybe his best week of his career, but still overall bad. And now the final game above me, Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. It opened, it's saying at minus 11. I didn't really see that anywhere. I saw some minus 10 and a half. I got it. It's currently at minus nine and a half for Dallas. I got it at plus 10 for the Giants. So I'm on the underdogs yet again this week. Look, this seems like a sucker's bet, maybe. It seems like another hold your nose special because Dallas has just sucked. They should be 0 4. They're 1 3. Their offense has been absolutely fantastic. Their defense has been absolutely abysmal. And this could just very well be the spot where, you know what? This Daniel Jones offense is number 29 overall, the New York Giants. They're facing the number 32 defense, dead last in Dallas right now. They rank dead last in coverage, but this Giants team ranks 30th in pass protection and 29th in overall offense. So it could just be the spot where, you know what? Dallas defense finally gets themselves going a little bit here because that's how bad the Giants offense and offensive line is. But I'm not too sure I believe that all that much. Let's talk through some things. Like I said, Dallas ranks 32nd so far in defense, allowing 7.4 yards per attempt, and they sport a 25th overall pass rush. Not very good. They're not getting a lot of pressure. Now, the Giants rank 29th in total offense, number 30 overall in pass protection, and Daniel Jones averages just six yards per attempt. That is one spot better than Carson Wentz, who I just told you absolutely stinks in that position. He is the second worst starter, only ahead of Carson Wentz right now in yards per attempt. Yards per attempt is an efficiency metric, kind of tells you how efficient the quarterback and the offense is. But, 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 in a big old but is look at the schedule for the New York Giants so far this year. They have faced Pittsburgh. This is in order. Week one, Pittsburgh. Week two, the Bears. Week three, the 49ers. And week four, the Rams. Three of those teams are currently in the top four in total defense. The first three matchups, Pittsburgh, Chicago, and San Francisco. All four of those teams right now are top 10 in pass rush. And we know how bad this offensive line is for the New York Giants. And three of those four teams are top 10 right now in pass coverage. So the toughest matchup through the first month of the season is this New York Giants team. Then you take into account no Sterling Shepard. Then you take into account bad offensive line, but also no Saquon Barkley. And now they have to rely on Devonta Freeman back there. Obviously in these matchups to start the month, they're probably not going to win those games and they're going to look really bad doing so. And that's exactly what you're getting from their offense ranking 29th in the league right now. But if you're going to give me double digit points that we just saw a bunch of teams go in and absolutely decimate this team, we've seen a bad Atlanta team should have beat this Dallas Cowboys team, put up a ton of points and they did nothing against the Packers, right? I get it. Julio Jones was hurt. We just saw a Cleveland Browns team that in my opinion is actually really good, but they almost just dropped 50 points in this Dallas team. I think that finally in a good matchup this year, you're just going to get a enough out of this New York Giants team to finally hit 20, 25 points. And we're hoping that they can limit on defense, the Cowboys to just in the thirties in points. We're getting plus 10. I'm taking that plus 10 right now with Daniel Jones, who's had a brutal start to the season in terms of the matchups now gets the exact extreme opposite in a matchup versus Dallas defense and pass rush. So that's our fourth bet of the week. If you're talking about spread picks, we gave you the over under. So five total bets. The final bet is the teaser that is now two and all in the season. The teaser for this game, we're going to tease down Pittsburgh. They're at minus seven in a lot of spots. We're teasing them down to a six point teaser. So I mentioned this as well in my betting video that I posted last week. It's just like a 20 minute video based on betting tips overall. It's going to help you be a better, better, take out your emotions, get the best numbers, just a bunch of little overall things that 
will help you make better long-term decision, expected value decisions, and less decisions with your emotions, which usually will lead to you losing. But we're going to just do a two-team six-point teaser. I don't like doing any more points in that. I don't want to buy more points in that. I think it's not good. I don't want to take any more teams in that teaser because I think that's not good. So two-team six-point teaser. We're taking Pittsburgh, who we already have the minus seven bet on. We're taking them down to minus one, and we're pairing that up with the Arizona Cardinals, who are also right now like minus seven and a half, minus seven in some spots. We took it on a site where they're minus seven, so we got that down to minus one as well. So basically, all we need for this teaser to hit is for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are touchdown favorites, and the Arizona Cardinals, who are touchdown favorites as well, a little bit more in some spots, to win their games. So if they win their games by seven to eight points, we get both of those spread pick bets in, and we also get the teaser. But we have the contingency plan to say if the Steelers win by 10, we smack that bet. But if the Cardinals only win by five or six, we don't hit that bet on the outright overall spread, but we get it on the teaser. So a little bit of a contingency plan there, but we also have the upside to hit all the bets like we did last week, like we had on Monday Night Football. The Packers came through, they won that game by two touchdowns, so they got us our minus seven bet in there, but they also got us the second leg of our teaser. So there you go. There are five overall picks, one over under, and then a teaser in there for you. I appreciate y'all tuning into this video. Give me two seconds of your time, please, and just hit that like button. Hit the big old subscribe button that's popping up on the screen behind you right now. I really do appreciate that. And check out Monkey Knife Fight. Monkey Knife Fight, promo code VETRI, V-E-T-R-I, a 100% deposit match up to $50. Rooskies, there will be a player props video out later in the week. That's what Monkey Knife Fight provides, a bunch of different prop games, player props, more or less over unders. So you can check that out. It's going to be linked down below. The player prop video will be out coming on Friday. So it might be out depending on when you're watching this. That video will help you give you a little bit of an idea of what some nice bets and some nice opportunities are on Monkey Knife Fight. So thank you a ton for tuning in. This video again might be up on another channel as well. Maybe you're watching it over there, but either way, take a second of your time. If you have it, go over to Big Energy Sports and hit the subscribe button over there as well. We're going to be putting out some more sports betting content over there and just some more content in general, trying to create some different types of content than just what you're getting over here in the fantasy channel. So we'll still have some fantasy sports, still some sports betting for my personal brand here, but I'm trying to create something new and something different over there in the other channel. And I'm excited to kind of put that thing together. So be sure to check that out as well. Thank you so much for tuning in guys. And I'll see you all in the next one.